So yes. um, the program basically is uh, for us to build muscles. We want our, our the, the seniors to gain strength. We want to we want them to have the power. The power is the, the, the strength with speed, right? Like when you trip, I, 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 I would like to see a senior trying to, 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 to avoid the trip by having to move their legs quickly so they don't fall. So yes. that, that's why we need the power. Um, Agility and all that. Yes, uh -huh. yes. And then we want to maintain balance. We want them to enhance their agility, joint flexibility, and also the cognitive health. Uh, very important. We, we employ this uh, thing called neuroplasticity. Welcome to another episode of Asenor's Fireside Chat. I am your host, Bobby Ancheta the Director for Training and Development of Asenor, and together with me is the co-founder of Asenor and also the Marketing Director, Lev Galang. Lev, good morning to you. Hi, good morning. How are you? Doing fine. Um, last, uh, when was it? Um, two weeks ago, uh, we you. had our uh, podcast um, discussion on vaccination, right? And again, um, thank you to Rafi, um, Ramon Abaitis Foundation Incorporated um, for the opportunity, no? Doon sa ano natin, um, Comunidad Contra COVID um, vaccination campaign and to the medical resource persons who graced our show um, during that time. And what do we have for today, sir? I, um, now, before we go to our discussion today, I would also like to share that because of that discussion that we had, mm -hmm. I was able to uh, convince my mother um, na magpabakuna na because she was hesitant before on, um, on the vaccination process and she was concerned. But I told her that the process of vaccination here in the Philippines actually takes uh, actually makes sure that there are certain precautions mm -hmm. so she doesn't need to worry about the vaccination because there are going to be medical personnel who will be on standby to ensure that when she's vaccinated, she is um, she is fit, she is ready. And if ever there are certain emergencies, because definitely when mm -hmm. ka, there is going to be some uh, reaction. Of course, the body is going to react to the uh, antibody, which is going to be introduced to your body. But... Uh, we have medical personnel who will be there ready to be able to um, assist you yes, and yes. to uh, take care uh, to ensure that you will uh -huh. be safe. So um, that's, that's what good, I told her. That's good news, Sir Bob. Um, actually, I know, um, it was very helpful, no, yung ginawa nating episode na yon. I also, we also got um, an email from um, one of um, the teachers who attended our first educator webinar series nung napanood daw po nila yung um, podcast she decided to also ano um get vaccinated although yeah, so, meron, yeah like um yung mga my comorbidities at least meron naman silang assurance di ba na um, this, safety yeah. protocols are observed before they get vaccinated this gives us a very good feeling because we know that the fireside chats the podcast that we are having is actually have is actually creating a good impact in our community because exactly. of the discussions that we have yeah. there are people who are convinced um, to proceed with certain actions that we are recommending yes, yes and today we're also very glad that we are able to invite another resource person who will be talking about functional aging or active aging so Lev can you please do the honors of introducing our guest today Yes, um, we're really glad to have with us today um, the founder okay, of ActiveAging.ph. So he is an active aging movement coach, a functional aging specialist, a consultant for sports and leisure. So he has been in the local sports and fitness industry for 30 years now. So he's doing sports or health club operations, management and consultancy, and personal training. Welcome to our show, Mr. Sonny Oralio. Good morning, sir. Hi, good morning. Good morning. 
Salamat po again um, for saying yes to our invitation. <laughs> Uh, thank you all for inviting me. Uh, I'm very glad to share uh, to share with you anything about active aging and for the older population. Yeah, sir. Before we proceed with our topic today, can you please tell us something about your organization, uh, the the company that you are running? Well, actually, I, I put up this company. You know, um, it's called Fitbound Philippines. Uh, primarily to, uh, to to sell three things. And one, one of that is um, gym and fitness management um, for, uh, for the sports and recreation and also for basically the personal training for the, for the seniors. Actually, I included there the, the, um, the 40 to the 50, Mm -hmm. uh, the middle-aged adults, because for me, yeah. primarily, I want to prepare this particular age group. So by the time they even reach the age of 50, they are, they are actually prepared to handle the rigors of, of, of aging. So I just want to see a strong republic probably in 10 years' time. Oh. What was the inspiration of uh, the, the, this company that you have put up? Why did you okay. think of coming up yeah. with this particular All right. concept? Uh, way back in 2014, I think my then, I think that was 2014, my parents were coming back to the Philippines, no? And then I realized that, hey, they're getting old. And, then, and I see how they change. Um, even myself, um, now I'm 56, but way back then, I was 51 or 50 and then something is happening. I'm not as strong as before, especially if you don't get to work out, you don't get to move as much. And then I realized my parents are aging and so am I. So I have to do something about it. And at the time uh, there was no pro, there was probably, but I'm not really sure. No, um, I guess coaches, fitness coaches are kind of uh, scared of tapping the mature market, maybe they find it risky, and 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 right. they just they they might find it, or they find it um, quite scary to handle this particular age group. And and I said, why not? If you know, if you're professional, you know, you get the education to handle um, doing fitness programs for the seniors. Why not? So. In 2015, um, I created Senior Fitness Philippines. The main focus there basically is just doing personal training. No? Um, and then at the time, I, I wasn't involved yet with active aging. It's only recently in 2019 that I came across with the proper terminology, the mm. more politically correct uh, um, term for for the seniors, other people wouldn't want to be called seniors. They say, um, they just want to be called seniors when they're getting their pensions, uh, when they're lining up or queuing up yes. for, for, for when paying bills or when going to the grocery, they want to go to that senior line um, mm -hmm. just for them to be able to get ahead of the, the pack. And, claim that benefit. <laughs> So yeah, that, that's, that's it. So, um, so I guess people in, in Canada and the U.S. would prefer to call themselves active agers more than mm -hmm. seniors. Mm -hmm. So, but then again, yeah, so why not? So um, I, I have a friend, uh, Lawrence Biscontini at the time, he said, why don't you, I'm going to hook you up with uh, Julie and, and Colin Milner of the International Council on Active Aging Base in Canada. So I said, why not? So I also want to make sure that I'm not infringing any, any rights or, or copyrights or, or patent in the use of the name. And so I, I, I got in touch with them and then I, I became an individual member. And then I had it registered, the activeaging.ph. So there you go. And I also have to mention also that um, during two, uh, 
2015, we were primarily doing progressive resistance training, not so much of the balance, fall prevention. It's just really strengthening, strengthening the seniors, uh, putting more muscle because the focus then is combating sarcopenia. So okay. that's how it all started. So um, when you say progressive resistance training, how does it work? Paano po yun? Anong kind of uh, work workout po ba siya? Um, yeah, it, it's actually, you know, Lev, it's actually weight training, the okay. use of weights. And, and when you use weights, you, it has to be progressive, meaning you have to keep on adding more loads, uh, extending the number of repetitions, making it more difficult, more com more complex movements. So that that's how that's why it was called progressive. Okay. Because if you just stay stay or stick to that 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 level where people get to adapt, it, it's not you're not going to go into progress. So you have to keep on pushing and pushing. So and push it's it. from it's from light going to heavy and yes. easy going to difficult so that's why exactly. it's called progressive exactly so it's, sunny before uh -huh. we proceed further before we proceed further can we then go back to our definition of what active aging or functional aging is mm -hmm. um active aging is actually the term given by the fitness environment in the US and Canada no, uh, to refer to people who are 50 years and older. Uh, this, this is the most heterogeneous group um, that may exist in, in a gym at any given time or any wellness or fitness environment. Um, it became a movement uh, that, it, that encourages an active and a healthy lifestyle and, and, and uh, to prolong uh, their lives, not for longevity mm -hmm. and the quality of life. So that, that's actually how what, what active is aging is all about. But um, we're actually here to help also and lead this this uh, population to maintain this feeling of self-efficacy uh, to address the the activities of daily living. You know, seniors can actually brush their teeth on their own. Change their clothes, yeah, walk the dog, play with their with their children, and and, and I mean grandchildren, um, and all sorts of uh, different different of activities, without without really uh, without really going through this 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 uh, stage of them having a hard time moving. That's so true. with this program. With this program, um, this will help them get back their lost uh, agility. I went through um, your website, um, Sir Sonny, and I saw a six-point living life experience. So would you care to expound more about that? This is how I want, this is how I want the seniors or the, the older population to experience. Um, for them to have this, this the quality of life, not just physically, no, uh, not just the training per se. It, it's for them to to because seniors are already near the finish line, so to speak, and they might as well. We might as well enjoy it. <laughs> we were all, we're all going there and and relieving sure. memories, you know, experience experience the things, the good things in life. And, and, and for me, um, I, I came up with this six point living experience um, as like a goal for them to reach when they get to going through the active aging program and this will be the end result. So, um, I just thought about it, and 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 I think, I think it, it's it's a wonderful thing for, for a senior to aspire. Yes, and, um, and para sa ating mga mga tagapakinig, ano, um, I'll just um, ano, the enumerate ko lang to. So the first one there is prolonging life, then there is improving quality of life, 
living in comfort and style, eating well. The fifth one is sharing and enjoying the moments and reviving and relieving memories. Ang ganda. It was your yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like your yeah, mantra. You know, what, mm -hmm. you know what? There's a difference because in uh, North America, for example, and in many countries, people retire at a younger age. Some of them retire at the age of 45. Some of them would retire at the age of 50 and enjoy their life from then onwards. But here in the Philippines, our retirement is maybe at 60 or 65, depending on, uh, depending on whether we feel that uh, kailangan na talaga ng compulsory retirement. In fact, 60 is uh, nasa sayo yan. You want to retire at 60, fine. But if you, want, if you don't want to retire at 60 yet, then yung compulsory retirement mo is, is at 65. There are others who do not even want to stop working because they feel useless if they just stay at home. Because many of the Filipinos do not have enough resources na kagaya ng ibang mga national, uh, nationalities na they would go abroad, they would go uh, visit places where they can only dream of and enjoy life. Here in the Philippines, at 65, you just wait until you reach that finish line. And it's like you're just, you're just waiting for Godot. You're waiting for that eventuality. And that's the problem that we have. How do we live life to the fullest if we are already on the latter half, the latter half of our lives? Maganda nga yung sinabi ni Sir Sani na he has included in his program those who are middle-aged, those who belong to the 40 and above. And I already belong to that particular age group. <laughs> I'm already going to be 47 next month. So this, this is good. This is very informative. And um, I would also like to share this with everyone, Deb. Mm -hmm. Now here in the Philippines, dumarami na rin yung concern with regard to the lifestyle of those who are uh, 50 and above. Why? If you watch television, ang dami ng mga advertisements on products related to strength, related to those who belong to the 50 and above. Remember Alice Dixon? She's now, um, she is now advertised. She's now the model of a particular product for those who are 50 and above. Alvin Patrimonio, uh, who was, of course, a legend, who is a legend in uh, basketball, is also endorsing another product that is for 50 and above. And there are children na parang sinasabi nila na uh, kawawa naman yung nanay ko. Uh, nahihirapan na siyang uh, gumawa ng dati niya mga ginagawa. So they are again endorsing certain products na this is what I give my mother because I want her to still be healthy and strong. So parang... The, no, the number of advertisements that we see on television related to products for seniors is also an indication of the concern of the people of the health and well-being of those uh, senior members of our society. Yes. And we have to face the reality. Actually, ano to eh? statistics. Um, if you go to the UN um, website, it's there, or the WHO, uh, World Health. By 2050, more than half of the world's population is as age and then a 60 up. Diba? And I would say na, ano pa rin eh, um, it's still one of the underrepresented groups. Yes. Which we should and, prepare. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which we should prepare. Because if we're going to be looking at it, a few years, uh, well, a few decades ago, sinasabi nila, especially sa National Youth Commission and those national agencies related to the youth and children, now almost half of the electorate, oh, more than one half of the population of the world are those belonging to the uh, 0 to 30 or 0 to 35 age range. But as you have said, maybe in 2050, it's going to be half of the world population that's going to be at the age of 50 or uh, um, yung mga seniors na. And why is that? I believe it's because yung demographics natin is nag-change. Nag-change din yung uh, population rate natin. And many people are now opting not to have children. So ang nangyayari is that the population is becoming older and older because 
less number of people are opting to really have children of their own. So yung nangyayari is yung nagso-survive are those who are older eventually. That's the reality and um I would say na lahat tayo um ano nga eh, parang concerted efforts of various organizations um, in different communities we have to really prepare of this growing um population um of older adults and tayo rin um darating tayo diyan diba so communities societies need to be prepared um can you tell us about um the specific workout programs that you offer we the program will be based on the on the condition of 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 the older individual um but overall we, we what we do would, would are are we try to build more muscles but but having muscles yun yung problema with the progressive resistance training because it's only one plane movement so what we do we incorporate the different planes of movement so it increases your your um how do you say it your mobility okay uh -huh. uh, you're more functional um it just you just don't want to have more muscles and you can't even move or you're having a hard time climbing the stairs because you have so much muscles on your legs you know what i mean like uh, yes Yes. Uh, it's not functional at all. Uh, it can mm -hmm. be, it can it can look nice, but it doesn't serve the purpose. It doesn't. It's not functional. So yes. um, the program basically is uh, for us to build muscles. We want our, our the, the seniors to gain strength. We want to we want them to have the power. The power is the the, the strength with speed, right? Like mm -hmm. when you trip. I I I I would like to see a senior trying to 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 avoid the trip by having to move their legs quickly so they don't fall. So yes. that that's why we need the power. Um, Agility and all that. Yes, yes, and then we want to maintain balance. Uh -huh. We want them to enhance their agility, joint flexibility, and also the cognitive health. Uh, right. Very important. We we yes. employ this. A uh, thing called neuroplasticity. It, it's mm. actually brain training. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know that during the 80s, we think that once you we uh, damage our brain cells, that's it. We we yes. don't generate and we don't produce. Mm -hmm. That's what we were taught. It, it, it yeah. It, I was surprised. You know, I was surprised to find out that hey, even older people can still produce brain cells. Um, So that is what what we're also incorporating to the program. Um, we 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 want to do neuroplasticity. We want to we want neurogenesis to happen. Mm -hmm. By how do you do that? We we incorporate the the mind, the mouth, and the body to work at the same time. Like when they're exercising, they're thinking, and they're talking. Like when they're doing, let's say, the lunges. They're doing the lunges. Mm -hmm. You ask them, what's their favorite color? What's their mm -hmm. T number? Well, you know, and nice. then you have to tell them, oh, um, okay, give your 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 T SSS number backwards. So they they get to think, hey, backwards. That's harder, but mm -hmm. they, they, we push them to think while constantly moving. It, it's kind of challenging, but that that's that's when creativity comes in for a coach. You really have to make that that program exciting. And I think, yeah, I think we also have to orient our clients regarding our techniques and strategies. Because the way I just listen to it, ako mismo maiirita. I'm doing something, and you're asking me all of these questions. Why are you? Uh, Bombarding you all of these questions. Because, <laughs> diba, like, yung, sa kanila is, okay, pag nag-exercise ako, yun lang. Diba, parang yung, uh, the usual okay. lang. Okay, yung movement ko, aware ako doon, but I'm not, like, answering questions or what are thinking or something. Pero, ang ganda ng exercise na yun, ah. So, both physical and the cognitive, ano, aspect. Oh, actually, I have a client. I have a client, I have to ask her, 
to mention the names of her grandchildren one by one from the oldest to the youngest and while she's doing the lunges. So it, it's actually, I want her to remember the family names. I mean, I mean the, 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 the members of the family with their names. Sometimes they forget it. And, and by yes. doing that, well, the, the family members will have nothing but to thank me. At least they, they, they get to remember though their names. Mm -hmm. So um, things like that, I ask mm -hmm. them when was their first date? And then they got to think, when did we have our first date? So I see that date, on the church na pinuntahan nila, you know, where they lived before, things like that. Uh, their first dance. And, and it's relieving memories at the same time. Mm -hmm. so it, it was wonderful. Uh -huh. I, I never thought that me as a coach would actually enjoy talking and training the seniors. Kasama rin yun doon sa six point living life experience exactly. na po, no? Right. reviving and relieving memories. Okay na yun, Sir Bob. Diba we thought about this journal writing, right? For um, older yes. adults. Yes. So, baka gagawin na natin yan sa ano natin, Learning Academy. Kasi, yes. ano yun eh, um, yung mental alertness nila, di ba? Na kahit kasi yung iba din na uh, they are concerned, di ba, na magka-Alzheimer's, it's a good practice for them, you know? You now that you have mentioned that, and uh, now that you have mentioned about that problem with Alzheimer's, which is a disease under, if I'm not mistaken, the dementia spectrum, it's one of those. I recently finished a Korean uh, drama, a Korean drama. Uh, the, the title is Napiera, and mm -hmm. the lalaki, the grandfather, who was already about seventy, just had that interest to learn ballet. So it was really very strange. You're 70 years old. You want to learn ballet. Why? But secretly, what he did not tell his family was that he just remembered that he really wanted, he was really very amused when he saw ballet for the first time. And the ballet was Swan Lake. So when he looked at a dancer who was maybe about 20 years old, less than 25, when he looked at that dancer, it brought back memories to him. It reminded him when he was still maybe around seven years old. Because when he was seven years old, his father forbade him from ever wanting to become a dancer. The thing, however, was that during the first time when he saw the dancer dance one leg, it brought him back his memories. Mm -hmm. Because he that was his first episode na nakalimutan niya. It was his first episode na he did not know where he was. He did, know, he did not know his name. He did not know how old he was. But when he looked at the dancer, it brought back all of his memories. That was just the first episode. Then he visited a um, neuropsychologist, uh, but uh, somebody, a, a, a doctor, sa, sa, na specialist sa brain. And then he was told, Nasige, this is what you do. You begin writing everything so that you will not forget. Every day you write what you have done in detail so that if ever you forget something, you can all the time refer back to what you have written. And so that's what he did. Eventually, of course, this was a melodrama. Na he was able to become a dancer in the mm -hmm. end. But you stage din niya na... Uh, he would sometimes forget something, but what the doctor recommended was, okay, write everything, write journal everything. And then aside from that one, his dancer coach told him, remember, your muscles, mo, even if you forget something, there is such thing as muscle memory. If you just proceed, you will be, your body will be able to remember. And that's also why I smiled, uh, Sir Sani, when you mentioned neuroplasticity. Kasi parang, Pareho din yun sa concept ng muscle memory. Na if you just do something regularly, at a snap of a finger, or even without you thinking about it, your body, your mind will just tell you na, eto siya. This is supposed to be the procedure. So parang ganun. Mm -hmm. with, with the programs, um, Sir Sonny, that you're doing, are there any like challenges? Um, like with yung how 
um, or older adults um, do physical exercise, of course, um, given siguro like yung age nila and then coming from baka yung iba, diba? um, during their younger years, they're not into, let's say, physical fitness or hindi sila nag-gym. So how do you deal with that? And mm -hmm. uh, the challenges basically, uh, generally, uh, this is what I encountered, no? First and foremost, the ailments. You know, they have different ailments, they have chronic diseases and all that. And somehow th these, these individuals would find it hard to go to the gym or, or go and start an exercise program. And, 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 and it's just hard explaining to them really and encouraging them that, uh, hey, no matter, no matter um, how sick you are or, or, or you feel you're weak, you just have to go and, and and move and exercise and the ailments for one and then also how they view themselves as old and weak it's more of the self-esteem um also the misconceptions that exactly they're old and and it, it is too late for them to exercise and also the part where going to the gym they might feel they're an outcast right you know and, and and it's a lot of uh the gym facilities really cater to the younger generation yes. and and that somehow um somehow really uh turn off a lot of our senior citizens which for me is a bad business because the 50 years and older are actually financially capable uh a lot a lot especially the 50s to the so they ha they have more money well i'm not talking about the general population in the country mm -hmm. we know that uh, there's a lot of uh, poor senior people no mm -hmm. and and somehow we can the government can help us address the problem yeah. um like giving them um maybe change the 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 care first uh, approach to more wellness based wellness and, uh, right. yeah uh, something to oh, yeah. something for the government to think about um <laughs> instead of just providing them with free medicines or or discounted exactly uh, hospitalization mm -hmm. why not oh, yeah. focus on on wellness uh, give yes. them exercise programs coming from professional coaches um and also i guess the complacency and the lack of movement i would always tell them you go out and move you know don't stay in the house and then just sit around and feel sorry about you getting weak and old mm -hmm. um there's so much to look forward to um but of course i hope i can say that because of this pandemic right, right. <laughs> everybody and not only the seniors are like isolated and quarantined but also us mm -hmm. uh that i hope that this quarantine will end soon this is, this is the the saddest part um this is this is the best time for for the people more much more the, the older population mm -hmm. to go out and, and and really work out and move and 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 really you know uh strengthen their immune system but because right. of the quarantine well we're quarantined uh and it's not good so we 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 had a lot of challenges there uh, i lost uh, a big number of my clientele uh because we can't really do personal training one-on-one -on -one. Yes. um so what i i what we did was um to put the the program online no but the problem with seniors a lot of them are not really into the internet thing and uh one of the things although their children can actually help them set up a zoom you know the camera the lighting and create a big space for them where they can they, they can exercise and us the coaches will go on zoom also and train them there mm -hmm. um but yeah that, that's one of the problems uh, another thing would be unless you are you can afford to have a nurse or a caregiver or or even a regular household help it could really assist you while the coach is there helping you and telling you what to do virtually yes yeah i ha you have like nurses two nurses actually some of my clients would have to help them and, and assist them so that that's how we do it but a, a lot of challenges really 
um, bad for business, bad for business. But but then again, we have to make the most what 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 we have right now, and yeah. and yeah, and my coaches also are are having the same problem. Um, they, 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 the, the seniors would want to have an actual one-on-one -on -one training, but it's just not possible at the moment. But for those who can, who are really in dire need to really exercise, even, even, even online would do. And yes, that's a, that's actually a big challenge. Virtual, virtual workouts. Um, I know this one. Meron din isang um gym sa um Cebu. They're doing virtual workouts, virtual workout programs. Like now we're doing virtual trainings pa na ginagawa namin sa, ano, sa senior <laughs> seminars to webinars. So, I work oh. out mga ganun eh. <laughs> <laughs> Digital but, workouts. But you also asked about how we do it. Of course, the medical, I, I remember your question, yes, sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we just don't start with a program, no? Um, we need their medical clearance from their physician yes. if they're cleared. Mm -hmm. and, and then the next step would be goal setting, what exactly you would want to accomplish. And, and uh, after that would be the, the we go, they go to the senior fitness battery testing, no? test battery, I mean, um, where we test uh, the, 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 their, we measure the strength their cardiovascular endurance, flexibility, balance, agility, their, their gait, their whole body movements before we even, mm -hmm. this is critical because yes. this will be based on what the, the testing would, the result would be. And this would be the basis of the program that we will create for, mm -hmm. for the older individual. So customize Pusha. Customize Pusha. Pusha. Oh, okay. Because there are times when an individual would believe na akaya ko yan, only to find mm -hmm. out that the body is actually not able to do the same things oh, as what right. you right. was able to do maybe about five years ago or ten years ago. Because mm -hmm. instant, pag sinasabi na akaya ko yan, dati nga, yan yung ginagawa ko. But in actuality, the body is not that strong anymore. Sir right. Sunny, further, I would like to ask, who helps you in the program? And do they undergo specific training before they can actually become your helpers or your coaches in your company? Oh, okay. I, 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 uh, my coaches are, are all professionals. No? Um, I, I leave it to them no? as long as they follow the guidelines. I, I cannot really dictate to them what they... Each of us would have our own way of of uh, creating programs. They just stick to the principles of, of functional aging. And, and uh, almost all of them are, are all American Council on Exercise certified mm -hmm. trainers. Uh, some are, are, are active aging movement coaches as well and, and uh, functional aging specialists. But it's different. We have our own unique way of approaching and creating a program. So I leave it all up to them. Depends on, hey, I can give you a client, no? Um, what, what we normally do would be to present our profile and the client gets to choose which one, a, a client, a female client would like to have a female coach. So we present to them the, the, the options, uh, with the, our female coaches to choose from. So that's how we do it. Um, I, I have, I have full confidence with all the coaches I have, I, I chose them and all of them are one requirement. They have to be 40 and above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, this is very yes, important. Right. They have the, they should have the experience, whatever they, we went through the experience. We, we made wrong exercises before we forced ourselves, we injured ourselves. So all these come and then come together and, and, and somehow help how we approach it. So mm -hmm. the experience actually, you know, play a, plays a critical role in, in, in designing a program to make it more safe Let, and effective. Yes, <laughs> Let, yes. I, I think the concept is also like peer counselor. Kasi magkaedad. Because oh. if our 
coach, for example, if our coach is younger, parang yung younger coach does not really understand completely kung ano yung nasa isip ng isang senior. Pero if the if our coach is more or less magkalapit sa edad natin, then um, the, the client tends to understand and tends to to trust more yung kaedad niya. So I think that's a very good strategy na kailangan at least 40 dahil yung mga clients din belong to the 40 to uh, the senior to the 80 uh, 80 year old range or whatever na parang ganun yung uh, nangyayari minamatch din and then oh, I can cite you an example sir uh what we have this uh we have this client no an 80 year old client a man wow. he's a smoker he was a smoker and here comes a 20 year 25 year old coach telling him sir i think you have to stop smoking mm -hmm. <laughs> And then the old man look at him and say, Iho, 80 years old na ako, papahintuin mo po ako mag sigarilyo. Umabot ako ng 80 ako na hindi ako namamatay. So, this is exactly the problem. We want them to stop smoking, okay. But the guy is, is 80 years old. Who are you to tell him directly, say, for him to stop? It has to be, the approach is wrong. I mean, you know, you put him first in a program and then eventually later on he'll, he'll be the one to realize that he needs to stop. Eventually, oh, little head. by little, instead of smoking 10 cigarettes a day maybe, and then he started on an exercise program and then eventually he said, sayang naman yung workout ko, I lessen it to eight. And then it goes down to six, to four, to mm -hmm. two, to one, then all of suddenly, he finally stopped smoking. Right. So, parang, yeah. ano din siya, no? Progressive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it has to be progressive. Yes. It has to be progressive. Yes. It it has to be progressive. A, a behavior that uh, you want to stop. So, from here to this one here. Radical masyado. Matatarno. Yan, Tama matatakot. Tama yung approach yung po, no? Na parang peer-to-peer uh -huh. -peer nga. Ganun siya. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. And, um, so, Sunny, yes. So, Sunny, we only have a few more minutes to go before we end our program. Um, what would you like to share with us, yung success stories ng company ninyo? Um, can you please tell us, share anecdotes with us with yung mga clients ninyo who first came to you, underwent your program, and then after that one, eto na yung buhay nila. Can you please share some stories with us? Uh, I, I can cite you a number. But really, not to brag about it, but, but this is what I can say, you know, uh, for people, you know, um, because a lot, there are a lot of people who don't want to really spend, you know, for, for, for getting the services of, of, or going through an exercise program because they don't want to pay. Um, but do they ever think that, that that would come out very cheap? If than paying your hospitalization bills. I, I mean, diseases and injuries can be prevented. But, but you know, medicine sometimes and procedures used in the treatment can actually more, be more toxic and, and more harmful as the disease itself. So um, I would always say prevention is always better than the cure. Mm -hmm. um, I... I I, I, I feel that uh, the older population should really go out, go out and move more if they can't afford to, to, to get the services of a professional coach, go out and move, keep on moving because once you stop moving, that will be the end of you enjoying life. You will be compromised. Um, um, the success, hopefully I can, I can actually say I am successful now, but I, will, I feel that I'll be more successful if I can really tap into the, the poor population no? and, and, and people who can't really afford to have the, the personal training services that we offer. Uh, I hope just like what you guys are doing in a senior, um, hooking up with LGUs and probably maybe going to the barangays combined 
number of uh, combined barangay people and, and going through and doing this active aging uh, exercises no, for, for people who can't afford to have the, the service. Uh, it, it's one thing that I want right now. Uh, this is my vision mm -hmm. and, and not just profiting from the, pro from the program itself. But of course we need it. We need it also. Basically that's why we're here for the business. But then again, you also think about this is what I want to do eventually and, and to bring the program to the poor. The social the good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the social, mm -hmm. the social uh, responsibility of, right. of, of everyone and, and hooking up with, with uh, the government to make sure that everybody gets into the bandwagon for, for a longer life. Not just longer, not just longer. You can have a longer life, but if you're not, uh, if you're not, if you're not as active, so it's still the quality of life that we need to to emphasize here. And that is, I think, one direction um, that definitely our organization and your organization can explore. As yeah. at Ayoya, yeah. we have this um, common advocacy, which is um, healthy aging. Productive retirement. Right. And um, Sir Bob, um, I would just um, share, okay, um, share screen tayo. So I'll just show para sa mga viewers natin. Uh, we are on uh, YouTube. Go with this one. So do you see this? Um, that's the website of Active Aging. There you go. Huh. All right. So, ah, yes, okay. this is your. So that's this active is active aging. Ph. Yes. Wow. There you go. So, um, Sir Sani, if you could um, let our viewers and listeners know about um, your contact details, kung meron pong gustong, um, those who want to avail of your services. Um, yes. Yeah, for yeah. people who are interested in, the, in, in our services, they just call. Uh, they just. Yeah, they can just text me or call me at zero nine one seven eight seven seven zero six six seven. Or mm, yeah, maybe they can visit the re website and find out more about uh, about the program itself and the organization. And do you have Sunny, other uh, yes um, platforms? Are you on social media? You have a YouTube channel or Facebook or? Uh, I have in Instagram. I have in Facebook, but. Uh, Everything is in the website. They can just check it out. Activeaging.ph. Right. Sir Sunny, the locations you, where you serve. Mm -hmm. What areas do you serve? Yung nang pala, I'm also curious to, to, to know if you have coaches like sa Visayas or sa Mindanao. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, Levens for Bob, uh, we're, we're actually concentrated in Metro Manila. No? Okay. And, and But with this pandemic, it, it's now we can reach as far as you know, anywhere in the world, yes, but virtually. but uh, the target really would be uh, to have um, one coach for every or even more for every town or city, and then we expand slowly. But but that's the vision, uh, and and everything stopped because of this pandemic. So we we, we want to reach as far as um, as Mindanao if if we will have. Um, coaches who can service there but okay. yeah sir sani since you mentioned about uh, coaches coming from visayas and mindanao what would be the minimum qualifications of your coaches just in case meron tayong listeners who are physical therapy uh, physical therapists or let's say mga gym instructors who more or less have certain training what are your minimum qualifications so that they can apply with you Aside po sa age, kasi ano po yasa, di ba? Dapat 40. Okay po. Uh, yeah, I guess the minimum requirement would be at least to have a physical therapy um, or even P, um, uh, what do you call this, um, degree, background. no? Yes. A background um, or sports, um, sports science. Yes. But uh, the problem kasi is not all people can actually afford to, to get the certification because it's kind of expensive mm -hmm. uh, having to uh, get a certification. But that's one thing I, I'm, I'm actually looking at. You know, if, if we would have coaches 
uh, as far as Mindanao and cannot afford to, to um, get their international certification, maybe, maybe we can help. Maybe I can yeah, help. Right. Maybe yeah. I can start um, educating them and come up with seminars for them to, yes, to, that's to, true. to go about uh, learning and what what active aging program or functional aging program is all about. That's Start with the basics. Yes. Yeah. And this and could the be science very, behind it. Yes. This could be a very good side hustle for let's say physical education teachers na, uh -huh. or physical education teachers, majors, physical therapists because hindi naman lahat talaga ng uh, physical therapists are actively uh, actively have clients, meron din silang mga pockets of extra time that they may be able to make use of productively by becoming a coach. Meron din tayo mga physical education teachers na who may not be as active as when they were actually in school right now because of the pandemic. They might be right. interested to, to apply with Sir Sunny as well and undergo certain training so that they can have additional income for themselves. That could be just an idea. Mm -hmm. Also, one more minimum requirement, you have to leave what you preach. Yes. <laughs> you know, you can say you're a physical therapy, but you're not really, you're not really into active training or active lifestyle. So I guess that good, you wouldn't be giving justice to the client. They, they really want to see the real, the real you because you you're there to motivate them you should That's be in shape. you should true. be in shape you should you should be active you should be doing this and that and that so people look up to you and and i guess that 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 gives your clients a source of uh, motivation yes. um, Right, so ang ganda ng episode natin today sir bob uh, ang dami kong natutunan yes Sir Sunny, before we go, would you like to say something to our audience? Um, maybe to, um, to to invite them to look into your program? Uh, yeah, I, I just wanna um, I just wanna inspire and motivate our our older population there. Uh, no one is too old to exercise. Mm -hmm. um, it's about time that we start. Um, you've seen the viruses. Uh, I mean, the COVID virus wreak havoc in our in our lives, and and this is something that is not good. And the only way we can combat this would be to have a strong immune system, strong body, um, and 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 the best way to start now is um, the best time to start would be really to become more active. You no, know? even if you're just there in the house in your own houses, be active, you move, you carry these and that, whatever. Just keep on moving. That, that's, all, that's all that I have to say for people. And just, just, just be safe, practice the social distancing. And, and, and um, there, um, I, I just wish everybody uh, the best of health. Thank you so much, yeah. Sir Sani. Yes. Okay, so once again, we're very happy to have with us Mr. Sunny Oralio of ActiveAging.ph. We have learned a lot from you today, and um, we hope that our listeners have also picked up uh, something from our conversation. This is again Asenor Fireside Chat, our weekly podcast focusing on stories, conversations, and issues serving the seniors of our community. Again, Sir Sunny, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you everyone for listening to our fireside chat. Until next time. All right. Bye everyone.